Okay, so we are back out to the uh, Sugar Shack project and uh, got a bunch of 2x6s stacked on top, uh, Amish 2x6s um, and some other miscellaneous lumber. Some um, end pallets over here and we're actually thinking about building a little knee wall above these two 4x4s in the end to give it a little bit more height so it can shed snow better. So if we might build a two foot wall, because right now it's about six feet right there. So with a two by six on top, it would be about uh, six feet, six inches. Also doesn't give a lot of headroom on the inside. So we're gonna build a little uh, knee wall, a two by fours, put it on top. And then uh, that'll support the, uh, the roof on this end. So getting a late start this morning. I woke up extra early and then hiked to the top of the hill to uh, take some pictures. So it's uh, about 10 o'clock. It was cold out last night though. We got down to 30s. So it was a nice layer of frost. But uh, I got some pretty cool pictures. So and my family's down this weekend. I'll work for you know four hours or so and then I gotta go do stuff uh, with them. Otherwise I'll get in trouble. So let me get to it. I only have the one camera today so it won't be any time lapse. Okay, so we have our front uh, knee wall built to support the uh, the roof, and uh, we have this one by ten material, the siding material up, and we use that to help us get everything in place. So we actually secured the uh, the one by tens to the four by fours first, and then laid everything up against them. It made it really easy to uh, to get everything in in line. So let me go back here, and you can see here. So we just basically put those one by tens up, screwed them to the uh, four by four in the middle here, then put the beam up, um, nailed it in place, screwed that to the uh, one by ten, and then the end one by or two by fours we screwed to the one by uh, tens, and then set our two by four double beam on the top. So that uh, allowed it to go up relatively easy with uh, no ladders really. We just kind of climbed up on the, some boards across the span. So that'll be the finished height. Um, and we decided instead of cutting these to length down low, we're going to leave them up high and we're going to work on that next. And then after that we'll do roof wrappers and that'll probably be it for today by the time we're done. So let's get back to work. So here's where we're going to leave it for today. Uh, we got that knee wall built on the front, uh, beam on the back, uh, it's just screwed into the side. And what we'll do, same as we did with the pole barn, is underneath each one of those, because they're just held in place with a, a lag, we will uh, we'll put blocks that will support it. Um, keeps the weight off the lag, um, just in two by four sections, and uh, screw them in. and. The pole barn's been up for three or four years now with the same technique. Uh, cut all the roof rafters to length, and uh, yeah, not too not too shabby. Well, we might. Uh, we're, oh, I know we're going to be adding lateral bracing. I always brace the crap out of everything to um, so keep the building from racking. Uh, and then we will be putting. We have some uh, plastic in the back, and it's blending in with the ground but we'll fit in that opening in the back wall and the side walls will build up with more pallets probably to fill in the holes um, but let air through like I said, the, this isn't supposed to be an airtight building uh, yeah, it's got to be able to let uh, steam out, a lot of steam so if it's airtight or even remotely airtight it will get mold and mildew and crap so um, yeah, it's not too shabby for a day now I'm going to go clean up and then stain the uh, front of my cabin. Got a nice day, I'm gonna get that done. At least the front of the cabin I can reach. So uh, yeah, this is part two. I'm not sure if next weekend I can come down or not. We have stuff going on. So it might be uh, two weeks before I come back down. But uh, stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching.